Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're taking some time to hydrate a lot. Replace those electrolytes with some Himalayan salt, Celtic sea salt. Get your feet on the ground and don't forget to meditate. I'm going to give you another of the Divine Light series. I know you were, if you're following along, you're probably wondering... When's she going to get to Archangel Michael today? Today is Archangel Michael's turn. The key of light with Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael is arguably the most recognizable Archangel. Archangel Michael is a spiritual warrior, leader of the angels and the archangels. Archangel Michael is a champion for justice and a healer, as well as a guardian of all spirituality. Archangel Michael can detect truth and lies easily. His blue flame sword of truth cuts lies and negative cords and attachments with precision and accuracy. When I was growing up as Catholic, that was the only archangel I ever really heard of. Michael and Gabriel. That's it. Uh, the rest of them were not in my memory, perhaps mentioned but not in my memory. Archangel Michael is powerful, loving, decisive, loyal, and compassionate. When we cross our trapped souls over, which is something that we do as a crew, as a ground crew, um, Arcturians by lineage have always helped take care of souls. Souls coming into incarnation, souls exiting their incarnation. And the karmic review, the life review, all the things. We can assist opening gates and crossing over trap souls or newly released souls. Um, so in the last couple of weeks, we've crossed over a lot of animal souls and people souls from various different events that are happening around the world. When we cross over trap souls, it's Archangel Michael's Legion of Angels that assists us. They open the gates for healing. And when some, some of these souls come, they are escorted by the, the angels. Many of these trap souls are not negative. Um, by and large, most of them are not negative. Um, but they were trapped because they were tricked however many years ago, thousands, eons. You never know. Uh, they were tricked into whatever event was taking place that caused them to be trapped to begin with and so they have trust issues right so all of a sudden they are at a place where their energy their soul energy can be crossed over to the light they they get to that point and then they're a little anxious they are less than trusting and many times every time this happens the archangels and the angels come down and literally envelop this being and escort them safely through the gates. One of the fears is that the darkness will come and snatch them out of that path from where we encounter them to where they get to the gate. There's a little space in there where some things could happen. And so the angels make sure it doesn't. Isn't that beautiful? I happen to think it is. Many trapped and released souls are apprehensive to cross over. They were tricked by evil, and that is how they were trapped initially. In these cases, we've seen the proverbial hand holding, which it's not really a hand. It's literally like angel wings surrounding them and escorting them or, uh, over to and through the gate. Archangel Michael leaves you unconditionally. He he loves with such deep compassion love like as, as soon as you encounter him you feel that in the depth of your being he serves your soul journey he brings you a spiritual gift now and that gift is known as the key of light this key allows you to open any door and clear away any obstruction and free yourself from any prison or enslavement whether it be physical emotional psychological or spiritual there is no need for you to feel trapped or locked out of a situation that you want to get into. 
You now hold within your hands a divine key that will assist you in many ways. The archangels have a message for you. You have the power of the divine in you. You have the ability to free yourself. No matter whether it seems that another person or a set of circumstances or the, the entire world even holds more power than you, your power is freedom and it is unconditional. It doesn't require the outer circumstances change in order for you to be free. Through us, through the archangels, you choose freedom your outer circumstances will often drastically change just because your focus changed where you're putting your energy changed from outside of you to focus on freedom through the divine. This is true. Many times we are all ready to believe those outside of us that tell us we are weak, powerless, burdened, unloved, unworthy. But that simply is a wounded soul swimming in a sea of suffering. Your worth, your power, your sovereignty, your born with abilities are yours unless you give them away. Stand up and choose to not engage with the chaos. Stand up to the chaos. All that stuff that gets thrown at you. And stand in your power and your sovereignty and your authenticity and say, that is not for me. I do that all the time. That is not my timeline. This craziness that you're talking about, that is not for me. I do not resonate with that. Command release of all bindings, seen and unseen, that take your power away or keep it locked in and demand that your power be returned to you. For now, to be free, use the key of light. This means staying true to what you know for yourself. Gently and lovingly assert your truth now. Do not cave in to the naysayers and the fear mongers. Most especially, do not collapse under your own fears or doubts. This breeds the environment and the doors open for negative entities and trickster energy from your ego. When we have doubts, when we have resistance, when we are questioning our truth, it's not that you can't doubt events, okay? It's not that you can't ask questions, but when you're starting to doubt your faith, when you're doubting your benevolence, when you're doubting your connection to the divine, that is the door that opens up to trickster energy from your ego. Your ego is all about this life. Your ego doesn't give two shits whether you ascend or not. It's about this life no matter what happens. Your ego is going to drive you away from source because source asks you to be in service to others. And your ego demands for you to be in service to self, which is the ego. So you have to stand up. You have to make a choice. And when in doing that, you have to realize that you've always been worthy and your ego has been manipulating you. Your bestie inside your brain has been messing with you all this time. Shut it up. Yes, you can do that. We do this all the time. Gently and persistently cleaving to the light within will bring you through all and any apparent obstacles. Free you from any apparent prison and ensure your divine destiny is fulfilled. So even if the road gets really rocky, bumpy, clinging to the side of a cliff type deal, stay in alignment to the light and you will be pulled through. All doors shall be open to you. You are being given the gift of unconditional grace. Apparent obstacles is an issue. <laughs> Yeshua has brought up several times. He loves to remind us that we humans are our biggest obstacle. We create and then put the obstacle right in our path and go, huh, well, I guess I got to turn around. And he's like, no, what you should do is question, why is this here? Who put this here? Oh, I did? Because I didn't think I was worthy? But I have my angels in my ears all the time telling me how worthy I am. 
and how benevolent and beautiful and powerful I am. So I think I'm just going to move this obstacle right on out of the way and keep on going down my path. It is literally that easy. Free yourself. Yeshua's last words before I did this. Free yourself. He loves to remind us, although many don't want to hear it, he is not your savior. He's not anyone's savior. His message was so that you could find the power to save yourself. And that's what we're all called to do. When one person saves themselves, it helps the next hundred people in their circumference, in their vortex. So you multiply that out exponentially. That's how we save the world. And we have done that to a, such a degree that the collective consciousness is zooming up. It used to be stuck in this low density vibration, and we've broken through that. We are zooming on up. That's why you're seeing a deeper crevice between the different frequencies. There's a huge divide there. Step back and radiate love from your center. This is your way, and this is the way. You do not have to betray your spirituality to fight. You can fight with love. And you can trust that it is your way. As a spiritual warrior, in each moment, choose love and trust that you are fighting the good fight. We have been led over the course of the last, what is it? Probably coming up on a year to be in daily practice to send out love waves to various um intentions. Some days there is no specific intention. We just send it out. As far as our energy will send east, north, west, south, up and down. And we do this because number one, it feels really good. When you don't know what else to do, send love and it will help everyone, including yourself. Number two, it is received really well all across the world, all across the universe, all across the galaxy. We get thank yous and grateful messages back from beings that we've never even encountered before because they have felt the ripples of love, that energy flow through their, their space. And it has made a positive change for them. They've been liberated many times by these daily waves of love that just through their place through their star system, through their planet, through their universe. This is a thing. It feels amazing to get those messages back because we send it without attachment to what's happening on the other end of it. Our intention is very clear. It's just really good to get that feedback. So if you don't know what else to do and your intention is just to help send love, send love. Even if it's a negative thing that you're trying to curtail or impede, love is so much more powerful than force. So much more powerful. You are learning that love is expressed in not as much as it is. It's expressed in no as much as it is in yes. So we can love while we defend a boundary, we can love while we defend ourselves. We can love while we embrace new beings. We can love while we embrace new upgrades and activations and all the things. Love is not only in the positive. It can also be to enforce and defend from the negative. You can have the ability to send it with a clear and loving message. You know, it's like that tough love from your parent. Maybe the message is delivered very, very strongly. And you go, wow, those words were powerful. But then you think about it and you're like, but it was all wrapped up in love. If, she, if they didn't love me, they wouldn't have told me that. They wouldn't have spent that time and energy on me. Standing in your power and speak your truth is what really helps to foster that unshakable faith. And we have to have unshakable faith right now. It is the building blocks. Like we're going through the, the school that helps us understand what true faith can do. 
Michael helps you realize that the strength that you already have within you is all you need to do this. The message is for you to trust in your own ability and triumph right now. No time like the present. You are the key to success. You must believe in yourself. You don't have to force a door open. In perfect timing and according to divine grace and will, all doors will be open for you. So staying in gratitude, staying in acceptance, understanding that we do not have all the answers, but when we ask the universe for something with clear intent and zero attachment to how it comes back, that means you're not micromanaging how it looks when it comes back. If you start to micromanage your blessings, you're not going to see your blessings. The universe is going, well, they pretty much already know all the things. So we're just going to let them figure out how to manifest that blessing that they have micromanaged. Instead, you want to just send it out and see what magic the universe has for you in delivering that blessing. This is true of all co-creation and our reality. We have trust, we have faith, we have belief in success, we feel the emotions tied to actually having the blessing, and then we send it out wrapped in love. And Zero attachment to what happens, zero attachment to a timeline, zero attachment to how it looks. You literally have to let that go. We don't control that. We never did. Never did. When you use, for an example, a rainbow infinity love wave and send out to the universe, you're allowing the love of, of your own energy to go out of the universe transmute and transform beautiful things people places and things and it comes back to you much much bigger than what our human brains can really fathom so just be in a grateful heart space of that be grateful that you can do it be grateful that you have the ability to accept it in its full and complete state your dreams and actions will prove themselves in time no person, place, or thing has any power to hold you back. The key of light is a spiritual permission from the universe to succeed in your life's mission. The key of light is spiritual permission from the universe to succeed in your life's mission. Put that on your bedroom wall your bathroom mirror and look at it every day say it multiple times a day i think that's beautiful you shall not be kept kept back from your divine destiny you shall be empowered to succeed yes let's do that if you're looking for permission to follow your soul guidance pursue your desires and passions that align to the mission here it is they've given it to you no more excuses you have the key open the door Failure is not an option, in my opinion. There is way too much at stake for that. I had a comment. Someone said, you know, it really hurts to feel. <laughs> it really hurts to feel these layers when you do your shadow work. And I immediately said, yes, but pain never killed anyone. And that's true. It hurts a little bit. But is that worth stopping and letting this go on for decades? I don't think so. When I realized all I had to do was feel the feels for about 30 minutes and then start working through the process of letting go and, and reconciling whatever that was. And then once I healed and learned the lesson, the switch was flipped and it never hurt again. It certainly didn't hurt like it did before when I was ignoring it. So yeah. Feeling is healing. And if you just rip the scab off and you don't really go in and debride the wound, it's not going to heal. You have to go in there. You got to dig deep. So worth it. If you're not willing to do that for yourself, why would anybody else? Yeah, I'm asking you. If you're not willing to do the work on yourself for yourself, why should anyone else invest in you? Refuse to give up on your dreams. This may mean freeing yourself from situations or relationships that have enslaved or controlled you. 
when you are ready, this can be done with great gentleness. This can be done with compassion and strength. Free yourself with love, not fear. You may need to lock doors to pa the past behind you. With the divine empowerment, you can completely and utterly allow the past to be over. Done. Benito. You will find that new doors can be unlocked for you. And when you take the free will choice that we all have to do this work and lock the past behind that door once and for all, letting it go with love, forgiveness, and gratitude. When you turn around, there is a literal like cornucopia of doors that you can choose from of blessings because you have taken your sovereignty and your power back and you have chosen to align to a higher timeline in that choice, in that event. In that moment, right there, you did it. And you go, well, that wasn't that hard. I'm going to do that again. It's just that easy. The, the hardest step is the first step because you have all this fear built up around this, this process that is just unnecessary. A lot of energy. Sorry. Free yourself with love. Do not dig into the fear state because that's where we've been that that's what we're coming out of so don't fall into that trap again we don't need to revisit all of our past traumas and events fully and completely in order to heal from them you only have to feel it to the point where it's dulled so if there's an event that you've been avoiding and every time you start to go down that road, it's like a really, really sharp knife cut to the heart. You have to sit with that. You have to sit with that sharp knife feeling and tough it end out until it no longer feels sharp. Now, you know, it is what it is. It, this has been studied. And they say 30 to 90 minutes is about the max time that you're going to feel that sharp pain of healing a past event, trauma, something, whether it be this life or our past life. Beyond that, it's dulled down and you can start to work through it. So you got to toughen up a little bit. You got to be willing to walk the walk. You don't need to relive every aspect of the event, you know, to, to get to that space. But you do have to get a little bit deeper down than just going, oh, yeah, that's what's in that box. And then like cover the box back up. You got to do a little bit more than that. So we are guided to the very efficient but effective way of dealing with shadow work. And that is through love, forgiveness, and gratitude. This was given to us in, in multiple visions. Multiple crew members got it. And um, basically, it's a like an isosceles triangle. And at the very top is love. And then uh, bottom left forgiveness, bottom right is gratitude. And that is within that triangle is where we work to do our shadow work. For me, I've said this many times, but if you haven't heard it before, I usually start with forgiveness. When I can truly completely forgive all parties involved in the event, then it's easier for me to go into authentic love for everyone in that situation, loving myself for surviving it, loving myself for coming back to it, to heal the wound, loving myself for realizing the lesson was for me and it didn't happen to me. Understanding that it was part of a soul contract. And I actually orchestrated this entire thing and giving myself um, grace and forgiveness for that. And then gratitude that I actually had people show up for me in my life who said, yes, I'll be the villain for you. 11, 11 on the clock. I will be the villain for you. I'll give you the other, the other aspect of the energy that you need in this event to truly get the lesson that you want out of this live stream. And again, love is the key. Love is the key. Love is the key to healing. Love is the key to being free. Love is the, the key to success. And love is the way. Love is the way. Yeshua taught love. That is why they wanted to get rid of him so badly. Because that is not what they teach. That's not the walk that they walk. I don't know what it is they're saying these days because I don't listen to them. But I, I see what they do. And it is not in love. When you're ready, say, I accept. 
Use your soul name if you know it. If you don't, you can use your earthly name. This is the invocation for the key of light. I, Andalusia, Queen of Royal Orders and Spiritual Gifts, call upon Archangel Michael and the key of light. I give thanks to the divine for the gift of liberation from any restraining circumstance. I give thanks for the opportunity to completely close any door I choose and open any door I choose. I am grateful to the loving encouragement of the universe reminding me that I will be successful in fulfilling my divine life's purpose. May I be assisted unconditional love to use my power of freedom with wisdom. May all beings be blessed by the grace of the divine so that the past ceases to hold them in pain and new opportunities of love can be accepted. May humanity open the door to light and love within through my own free will and with unconditionally loving guides that serve the evolution of humanity. So be it again. Love is the key. We are love centered at violetlotusenergy.com. I invite you to take us a, a gander over there, sign up for your QET session to get cleared. And then you can have some of these um, customized activations we have divine feminine, divine masculine, healing the inner child, uh, past life activations. We have Pleiadian activations. We have Isis activations, Shambhala with green Tara, organ system rehab and restoration. If you have a failed organ system, we can help with that. Recently, we've helped a couple of people. One had had a total thyroidectomy many, many years ago, had been on medication ever since. And wanted the form, the physical form that she's still currently in to function in that area without the help of medication. And I worked with ISIS and that healing was given and they are now weaning off of all those medications. Bravo, bravo. The other is an individual who has had multiple accidents and had some organ system um, paralysis and chronic pain due to that. And they're, they've had three sessions and their pain is virtually non-existent and they're increasing their sensations all the time. And I expect that to be fully restored as well. So if you are curious, if you resonate, please stop by violetlotusenergy.com. Remember that Truth Resonates is our podcast that drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m. or thereabouts. It depends on how my week goes. And we do put some juicier things over on our Rumble channel. I'm trying to go there a little bit more often. Um, yeah, it's just a lot. And then if you're interested about how can people walk around without a soul and how did I end up with soulless beings in my family and what do I do with this information? Please consider picking up my book, Sold or Soulless. You see it behind me on the shelf, available on Amazon. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you again next time. Take care.